My name is Alan Arayek. My unique talent is the prevention of dementia. This is a continuation of an informational video series. We will be reviewing new scientific concepts that I've developed that will help you to prevent dementia. The full description of the method is over 100 pages long, and that does not include an explanation of every medical term and every medical concept. Today I'm going to give you a direct shortcut to the prevention of dementia. You do not need to understand exactly how your smartphone works in order to enjoy your piece of technology. You send an emoji or a text message to a friend, but understanding all of the computer codes, data transfers, cell towers, microwaves, operating systems, these things are not important for you to be able to use and enjoy your technology. I'm going to be presenting part of the prevention of dementia to you much the same way without getting into all of the details. Now don't get me wrong, I would love to sit and review all of the details with you. We could spend a couple hours. In fact, that's all that I do. People that know me, this is my passion, this is my state of dharma. All I do is talk about this. So please, let us sit down. We can arrange research. We can talk about cases of success. We can develop new concepts. That would all be very exciting, but that's not our goal for today. Before we get too deep into this, rather than continually explaining that most of what I will be discussing differs significantly from your healthcare team and academic guidelines, I will simply ask you to watch, understand, and choose what path works best for you. For some, following supplied guidelines from their healthcare team will work out just perfectly. It may be what you need. For others who wish to prevent Alzheimer's disease and dementia, grab pen and paper, take notes, leave comments. Okay, let's get started. MRI of your brain. You need to have an MRI of your brain and it needs to be read properly. Remember in the video, The Brain Does Not Age, I explained to you exactly what you'll be looking for with a proper reading of your brain MRI. That may be a challenge. Here at the Dementia Prevention Center, we scrutinize the data that can be obtained from an MRI, and the interpretation is made independent of the age of the client. 3D images and a model help in your understanding of the most important structure that make up your self. The MRI allows us to know how much damage a brain has suffered over time. Neuropsych testing. You need to get neuropsych testing done the first year that you've had a senior moment. Now this is six hours, there's no shortcuts. For many, this will serve as a baseline, but for a few, it will also identify that there is already a problem with their cognitive conscious function. Recall cognitive conscious function and how it decreases over time based on the amount of damage that the brain suffers. The priority in this category is for you to identify and understand your cognitive conscious function independent of your healthcare team who will only pick it up in the advanced stages. The reason is they use tools that are designed to be cost effective and quick. Crowded arteries, you have two of them. They provide most of the blood flow to your brain. They serve as a nidus for micron strokes and strokes. An ultrasound of this artery is relatively simple because the arteries are close to the surface. There are two important trends in the reporting of the results from a carotid artery ultrasound. The vast majority of testing will be interpreted and reported as a blockage in the neck that needs to go for surgery or not. The first trend, the majority of ways that this report will be presented back to your healthcare team is that the results will either say you need to have a surgery on your neck or not. There is a big blockage or not. That is not good enough. The minority of facilities will report the exact percentage of blockage in your neck. Now this is what we need because for the prevention of dementia, we need to know where that blockage is based on your age, based on where you are. It's important that you understand the exact percentage of that blockage. So if you get an ultrasound of the arteries of your neck, you need to see the report. You need to look at that report. If you see words on that report with words such as no significant carotid artery stenosis, then you need to tear that report up and try again. You may have to try a number of times until you can finally find a location that is able to provide for you a report of the exact percentage of blockage in your neck. It is either zero or a percent. 
Realize that there are four arteries that supply blood flow to the brain. No one can determine when there has been a reduction in flow that is significant in any one single artery. You have three other arteries that are supplying blood flow at the same time. What we are looking for is trend number two. And depending on where you are located, you may have to search or hunt for a location that will provide the testing in this manner. Here at the Dementia Prevention Center, we are constantly updating our list of locations that will provide this service accurately, give you a result of either zero, meaning no blockage, or a percent. This is how you're going to be on your way to the prevention of dementia. You need this information. If you do have blockages, don't lose hope. Here at the Dementia Prevention Center, we have successfully dissolved many blockages in the body with medical treatment. All the attention is to the details, excruciating details. To our understanding, we are the only location that has successfully dissolved blockages with medical treatment. We have studied this and plan to publish the data. The data will be considered observational, so it is very unlikely that it will ever reach any academic guidelines. Future funding will hopefully allow for us to prepare randomized controlled trials as many of our success stories took more than five years. Hypertension or high blood pressure. Simply put, keep your systolic blood pressure less than 119 through your life. Forget terms like borderline, elevated, pre-hypertension, high normal, hypertension stage one, hypertension stage two, severe high blood pressure, hypertension stage three. Those are different codes and symbols that all represent the same problem, high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, get it treated. That may not be as simple as stated because when studied in the United States, most people with high blood pressure go untreated or undertreated. Diabetes. If you're type 1 or type 2, get your three-month average, your glycohemoglobin. Do the best you can to keep that under 6.5. Closer to 6.0 will be much better for you. Anything that is over 6.5 is allowing additional damage to be done to your brain. Pushing those numbers above 6.5 allows that damage to add up. LDL cholesterol. Be warned. Here, what I will be describing will directly conflict with some of the most recent published academic guidelines. The main difference is that the published academic guidelines never look at the carotid arteries. In fact, many academic institutions recommend against looking at the carotid arteries until there are symptoms. Now you've been following along with this video series and you understand symptoms may not always come until the more advanced stages of a problem. If you had a properly performed carotid artery ultrasound, then you know the condition of your carotid arteries. If there is a blockage in your carotid artery, get your LDL cholesterol to be less than 70, between 50 to 70. If your carotid arteries are clear, there is zero blockage, then keep your LDL cholesterol less than 100 through your life. At any point your LDL cholesterol is over 100, you are simply adding blockages to your body. Now if your genetic code is bad, and you're one of these people that have extremely high LDLs, then you may need lipophoresis. Again, these are terms that you will not necessarily see presented to you with academic guidelines. But these are things that exist in medicine and science, and they can be offered to you to help get your LDL cholesterol down to where it needs to be. When your LDL is over 100, you will be developing blockages. The higher your number is, the faster you will be developing these blockages. While this is a crossroads of opinions, many physicians of medicine and providers of medical care will agree with what I am explaining here today. Providers of healthcare may simply follow whatever guidelines are placed in front of them. This becomes your dilemma. We have successfully dissolved blockages in the human body by adding this method to a wider method of care to a unique individual. Knowing the condition of your carotid arteries is important. Guidelines will usually only look at the carotid arteries 
once you have symptoms. This point always confuses me. Those who write academic guidelines about the condition of the carotid arteries would probably not sign their name to a similar guideline that said wait for high blood pressure to have symptoms before you treat it or identify it. Wait for there to be symptoms in a diabetic before you would identify it or treat it. So common sense demands when a stroke is something that is preventable, when dementia is something that is preventable, knowing the condition of your carotid arteries would be of a big benefit. I'm serious. Would you continue to drive your car until it had a symptom of being out of gas? Would you allow your home to have the symptom of being out of milk, eggs, butter, or bread before you made a plan? I think not. Tobacco. If you're using it, you must stop. You will have micron strokes on a daily basis. Systemic inflammation. There are many causes in the human body that can cause systemic inflammation. The inflammation in your body needs to be discovered and eliminated if at all possible. This can come from medical conditions or from infection. Do the best you can to get it cleared up. At times we have clients and the treatment of a systemic inflammation in the body is not as easy to fix as some of the other categories. So in these individuals they need to pay extra attention to all the other categories. Hypercoagulable state. For some of you, your genetic code carries a defect. This defect may be as obvious as forming blood clots that go to your lungs, blood clots in the legs, multiple miscarriages, strokes, the onset of early dementia. Or it could be as sinister as the first MRI of your brain showing a significant amount of damage that's already been done. Much of this damage you may have been unaware of. Fear not. We have had clients age 16 and up who after identification of this type of unique problem in their genetic code have been able to avoid micron strokes, strokes, and blood clots. They have also successfully given birth to children after the attention to the details. Some clients in this category have also experienced a reversal in their memory problems after identification and treatment of this condition. Atrial fibrillation AFib. AFib is a quivering of one of the top chambers of your heart. You need to know the condition of your heart valves. You need to know the size of the chambers of your heart. Usually after age 11, there is degradation and damage that starts to the condition of the heart valves. This is occurring at a rate of approximately 100,000 beats per day. As the valves change, they may allow the pressures in the heart to also change. As these pressures are changing, then you will experience the changes in the size of chambers of the heart. Once your left atrium reaches 40 millimeters, you're at risk for atrial fibrillation. The risk is elevated. However, once your heart left atrium reaches a size of 50 millimeters, your risk of atrial fibrillation is extreme. Now, some AFib will be detected when you have symptoms rapid heart rate, stroke, not feeling good, trouble breathing, or any of the other ways that atrial fibrillation can present once symptomatic. The trick here is detecting the atrial fibrillation before you've actually noticed symptoms from it. This can be done with an EKG, an electrical tracing of the heart, an overnight monitor, or an extended monitor. If you're able to detect it and treat it before a stroke, that may be classified as a very big advantage to you. These are decisions you need to make. So a clear understanding of the condition of the heart valves and the size of the chambers of the heart is mandatory to the prevention of Alzheimer's and the prevention of dementia. Now I appreciate that as a lot of information. The book Prevention is Difficult but Possible, available on Amazon.com, goes over these issues in more detail and you can read through that if you wish. My name is Alan Arayek. My unique talent is the prevention of dementia. Thank you for watching.